With more than 45,000 chiropractors currently operating in the United States and chiropractic covered by the majority of American insurance plans, many people never stop to wonder if something so ubiquitous could be complete bullshit. After all, an institution based entirely on a fictitious notion that can be proven false could never get away with fleecing the American populace for generations while maintaining a protected status by the government, could it? Well, hopefully we can find out today when we ask, How, how bullshit, bullshit is it? Is, 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 is. So tell us, Heath, what is chiropractic? It's bullshit. Yeah, no, I know, but we've got like seven and a half minutes to fill here. So just just give me the same answer, but the long version. All right. Um, chiropractic was founded in 1895 by Daniel David Palmer, utilizing his expertise in metaphysics, phrenology, magnetic healing, and arranging vegetables at a grocery store. He developed a revolutionary theory of human biology that directly conflicted with everything that was known about medicine at the time. And this time. Basically, it conflicted with all the known things at all the times. Okay, so what was this revolutionary theory? That all of human disease was caused by bone misalignments that disrupt the innate intelligence that flows through your body. I see, and what kind of research did he do to confirm his theory? That would be none whatsoever. Uh Uh-huh. So what is innate intelligence? That's Palmer's term for spiritual life force. Uh, Okay, so wait, so chiropractic, the thing that... 45,000 certified doctors do in this country and that is covered by the majority of insurance companies is based on the untested claims about manipulating spiritual life force? Exactly. Uh Uh-huh. So what kind of conditions might a chiropractor treat? Uh, Well, all of them, up to including the most expensive ailment you can afford to treat. So That seems a little harsh. Look, even the FAQ on the American Chiropractic Association's website treats that question with vague, sweeping statements like, They care for patients with a wide range of injuries and disorders, or the benefits of chiropractic extend to general health issues since our body structure affects our overall function. And, of course, they also counsel patients on diet, nutrition, exercise, healthy habits, and occupational modification. Uh So, basically, they're omnipotent. So, no, I thought it was, like, mostly for back pain and stuff. (laughs) Again, it depends entirely on what they think they can convince you of. Palmer claimed he discovered chiropractic after accidentally using it to heal a person of deafness. Deafness? Deafness. As in the inability to hear. (laughs) The same. Despite the fact that nothing involved in hearing even touches the spine, tangentially. The fact that he didn't know at the time, and many chiropractors continue to actively not know today. Okay, but chiropractic manipulation has been shown to be effective for some ailments, right? Like lower back pain? Uh, No. Spinal manipulation has been shown to be mildly effective for non-specific acute lower back pain, but chiropractic manipulation has never been demonstrated to be effective for anything. Okay, but that seems almost like you're splitting hairs, right? So chiropractors do perform spinal manipulation, and that's effective. Right, so when they're not doing chiropractic stuff, they might do something that works, yes. But look, when, when a shaman uses an iPhone, it still works. That doesn't legitimize shamanic magic in any way. So. Oh, okay, so what's the difference between spinal manipulation and chiropractic manipulation? Well, by definition, chiropractic manipulation refers to a realignment of the spine or skeletal system intended to remove a vertebral subluxation. Oh, well, that sounds science-y. Does it? Maybe the definition will help. It actually means spinal blockage of your body's innate intelligence that causes all disease and can't be detected by any means, invasive or otherwise. That's what that means. Yeah, sounds significantly less science-y now. Yeah, (laughs) and continues to sound progressively less legit, the more you learn about it. Okay, now, I have a hard time believing, though, that something that contrary to our scientific understanding of medicine would achieve so much acceptance in the medical community. Well, that's because you're under the mistaken assumption that medical licensure is controlled by science when, in reality, it's controlled by government. Chiropractors have lobbyists and money, and when it comes to medical regulation, that generally trumps laughable implausibility. But, by, by a good amount. But, but real amount. medicine also has money and lobbyists. And it, I mean, it would seem like, you know, even just from a financial point of view, it would be in their best interest to shed some light on the fraudulent nature of this practice. So why don't you hear groups like the American Medical Association actively campaigning against chiropractors? Well, that's because when they did, chiropractors sued them and won. I see. But chiropractors are state licensed as doctors, right? They, I mean, they still have to pass the same state test that MDs have to pass, right? They used to. But as of 1979, no state requires chiropractors to actually know real medicine. They're even licensed and can bill themselves as primary care physicians. But they get tested more on their knowledge of antiquated pre-scientific magic than they do on 
medicine. So it's but but I read somewhere that chiropractors had to spend more hours in training than any other general medical profession. Okay, but concert violinists spend a lot of time practicing too. It really doesn't make them doctors now, does it? Mm, no. Okay, but do all chiropractors believe in all like the spiritual energy forces and verbal subluxation stuff? Well, to be fair, nowadays not all chiropractors limit themselves to just the treatment of subluxations. Many of them branch out into more practices like therapeutic massage, Reiki, acupuncture, and other forms of pre-scientific nonsense. But there is a small movement within the practice to reform and give up on all the non-evidence-based stuff. Which what, what stuff would that be? The chiropractor part. Oh, right, okay. All right, well, so let's talk safety now. How safe is chiropractic? Well, the odds that it'll hurt you are low, and they're almost as low as the odds that it'll help you. Okay, Pretty but, low. but I mean, it's, but it's relatively safe, correct? Well, relative to what is the question? If you compare it to real medical procedures, sure, it probably fares pretty well. If you compare it to doing absolutely nothing, which would net you the same result, it's pretty dangerous. To properly evaluate the safety of a medical intervention, you have to weigh both risk and benefit. If there is no benefit, any risk is unacceptably high. Well, okay, but I mean, it's basically a souped-up massage, right? What's the worst that could happen? You could die from a stroke caused by a vertebral artery dissection. Can that really happen? That does really happen. Wow. All right, so what is a chiropractic visit likely to cost? Generally ranges between 40 and $100. Okay, well, in the grand scheme of medical bills, at least that's not too bad. Well, that's if they let you get away with one dose of the snake oil, sure. But chiropractors generally work on the predatory loan business model of pseudoscientific refinancing. Virtually any ailment that a chiropractor treats will require a series of procedures often lasting for eternity under the guise of preventative treatment or maintenance therapy. Hey, well, you make them sound like con artists. They're like doctors, except they don't improve your health, except when they stop chiropracting. If that sounds like con artistry, not exactly my fault. Okay, but... What about the more evidence-based chiropractors that just do the spinal manipulation for lower back pain? I mean, if they reformed the profession and just focused on that, that would be all right, wouldn't it? Yes, if you want to maintain an entire system of regulation and licensure for a practice that deals with a single non-threatening ailment by using a therapy that other doctors already use just as effectively, I guess that sliver of chiropractic is fine, sure. So I guess the only question left Yeah, you, you don't have to do the echoey thing, you really don't Yeah, but I'm going to do it anyway. How, How bullshit, bullshit is, 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 is Well, that's actually tough to say because there's so many practices that end up falling under the chiropractic umbrella, and they range from pre-scientific to unscientific and all the way to anti-scientific. Uh-huh. But in the end, the best you can hope for when you go to a chiropractor is that they bullshit you about doing chiropractic and then do real stuff instead. So I'm going to go with... Large bull, projectile defecating to death after overdosing on industrial strength laxatives in a shag carpet factory. Oh, wow. And with that lovely image swirling in your head, the music fades in.